Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fly From Home YouTube channel. Uh, my name's Kizzy and today we're going to be doing some multi-engine training in uh, this lovely looking DA62 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now the extremely observant among you will notice there are some very slight visual changes to this model, noticeably around the props. Uh, I'll get onto that a little bit later. Uh, but we'll start off with just describing what we're going to be doing today. And full disclaimer before we start, uh, I am a real-world commercial flying instructor, but I am not a real-world multi-engine flying instructor. I don't have my MEP ticket just yet. Um, I do fly multi-engine airplanes, but I can't instruct on them just at the moment. Um, hopefully that's going to change quite shortly. Um, so what I'm describing here, uh, full disclaimer, uh, I haven't actually been trained to teach, but I have been taught it um, myself, so I'm speaking from experience as a pilot rather than as an instructor uh, in this case. Since I just had to renew my multi-engine piston rating, um, I thought it might be worth uh, showing you guys just what it takes to um, demonstrate to an examiner that you are competent to fly a multi-engine aeroplane. Uh, now, again, uh, another bit of disclaimer here, I've never flown a DA-62, however, uh, I do fly the DA-42, which is the small version of uh, this aeroplane. Um, so I think I'm, I'm reasonably qualified to describe uh, the process uh, process required in this video. Anyway, okay, so let's uh, let's get on to, to what we have here. So we've got a, a DA-62, um, it's the, the bigger um, six seat, I think six seat version, five seat version of the um, DA-42, which is the probably most common to, uh, twin engine training aircraft these days. It's a very, very nice airplane. It's built mostly out of carbon fiber, plastic and all that kind of stuff, which is uh, makes it surprisingly light for quite a large airplane. Um, so even though the engines uh, only develop about 175 horsepower aside, uh, the performance is really good, especially on one engine, as uh, we shall be seeing later. Now, this uh, <laughs> this model that we've got here is a default in Microsoft Flight Simulator. However, there are some uh, there are some little changes um, because I've been playing around with mods, and there is a um, a realism mod for this airplane. Um, I'll leave the link in the description for it, and it's supposed to bring us some slightly more realistic features. I've not tested it. So bear in mind, the whole thing could just fall to bits on us uh, straight away. But, you know, there you go. It's um, be pretty um, indica indicative of my uh, ability with computers if the whole thing just breaks as soon as I turn it on. So let's see how that works. But it should give us a bunch more features that are, are relevant to the real aircraft. The uh, The default is pretty basic. It flies quite nicely. It flies as you, as you might imagine a DA-62 will fly. Uh, but it's missing a lot, of the, a lot of the little subsystems and things from the G1000 and from the uh, certainly things like the engine test function um, is, is missing from the default aircraft. And this mod adds it in. So uh, we should uh, be able to do a few more things uh, with this than we could with the, the fully default aeroplane. Okay, so let's uh, just describe exactly what we're going to be doing today. So we're here at Nottingham Tolleton. Again, if you guys have seen my... Um, Flight Simulator 2020 first video, first impressions video. We started off in this airplane at this airport, pretty much in this parking spot. So, deja vu. Um, so, here we are uh, at Nottingham, and we're going to be taking off from here once we've done all our relevant uh, checks. Departing up on a short navigation leg. Now, for an MEP test, it doesn't have to be any longer than about 15 minutes uh, outbound and back in again. Uh, depending on how mean the examiner is, but um, let's assume we've got a nice examiner on board today. We're only going to go up to uh, Sherwood Forest and back again. I've got a little plug um, that I made on <coughs> uh, Sky Demon um, that uh, we'll be using to, to just navigate up there and uh, come back again. Before we come back, we're going to do some general handling. So that's just going to involve some uh, steep turns, some stalls, uh, and just some basic sort of... Um, slow flight, maybe some configuration changes, just a, a basic demonstration of general handling to, to show the examiner that uh, we can handle the aircraft competently. Uh, then we'll return to Nottingham. Um, we can use the aircraft navigation systems, um, maybe demonstrate the usage of uh, the autopilots, and then uh, get ourselves into the circuit here at Nottingham. Um, now normally the examiner could ask you to do um, 
flapless circuits, um, standard approaches, all that kind of stuff. We'll just do one approach um, with both engines. So we'll do a standard touch and go, full flap um, on whatever runway is the active runway. And um, once we've done that, we will get into the interesting stuff, which is the asymmetric uh, air work. Now, asymmetric for the uninitiated means uh, we're gonna we're gonna fail an engine. Now, in real life, what the examiner would do is he'd just grab hold of one of the power levers and pull it back into the neutral position, the neutral power position. So that's about sort of 10%, 10-15% forward of the bottom. Uh, if you pull these levers back all the way to the bottom, it puts the propellers in, in what's called a disc mode, um, which uh, flattens the blades off to the airflow and gives you a bunch of drag. So you don't really want that uh, because it's going to give you a bunch of extra drag on one side of the airplane. Basically, what he's, he's trying to do is simulate uh, an engine which has failed and has then feathered. So it'll, it'll pull the power back. You then have to identify which engine has failed. So the trick to that is whichever leg isn't doing anything, assuming you're keeping your uh, little trapezoid lined up in the middle and adding the right amount of rudder, the, le the leg that isn't um, having to press the pedal is uh, the side on which the engine has failed. So dead leg, dead engine, basically. So identify the engine. You then um, would basically get the airplane climbing and flying away at your uh, VYSE, which is best rate of climb on single engine speed. Now, uh, for DA42, it's about 84 knots. Uh, for this airplane, I imagine it's a little bit faster, so we'll, we'll use about 87 knots or so um, as our VYSE. Normally, there's a blue line on the speed tape, but like I said, it's it's a default airplane. It doesn't have all those things. Although that mod might add it in. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, so you climb away at blue line speed. The, the drill I always use is uh, power up, so make sure you're at full power. Gear up, flap up, go up. So get the gear up, get the flap up, pitch the airplane to, uh, to the blue line speed. So you've identified your engine, you've got your airplane climbing away, you now need to secure the engine. Now I don't usually do um, all of the engine secural checks in the, in the climb, I'll save those to the top of climb, but the most important one in the DA42 and, and I'd imagine in the DA62 as well is to hit the engine master switch for the failed engine. Because what this does is it automatically feathers the dead engine's propeller. Now feathering the, the prop will turn the blades of the prop into the airflow. So instead of sitting um, w like w width ways on, I guess, flat flat surface on to the <laughs> to the airflow as it's doing at the moment, um, it will turn into the airflow. So there's there's very little drag coming from that prop. It'll stop spinning round, uh, and it will make the airplane much much easier to fly uh, because you won't have the asymmetric drag effect of the dead propeller pulling the airplane uh, round to one side and making it much more difficult for you to maintain uh, your directional stability. So pull the engine master, verify that the prop uh, feathers, and then just keep flying your airplane. Obviously, you check for fire as well. So you've got your failed engine. If it's on fire, you've got to do your engine fire drill, which involves uh, smacking the fuel off and potentially putting the airplane into a dive. Uh, you would potentially think about doing um, a forced landing at that point. If you had an uncontrolled fire on the wing, um, even though you're still able to, to fly the airplane on the one remaining engine, um, you would uh, probably think about putting it on the ground pretty quickly because uh, burning um, burning to death isn't a nice way to go. Um, <laughs> so, trying to keep trying to keep things lighthearted. Um, <clears throat> so, we'll, we'll verify there's no fire. We'll get the aircraft aircraft to the top of climb, and then we'll do our secural checks. And the secural checks are just alternator on the failed side goes off, and fuel on the failed side goes off as well. Uh, and then we fly the airplane uh, on one engine. Now, we'll have to use a judicious amount of rudder trim to make uh, our life easier when we're doing that. Um, <clears throat> but for the most part, flying this airplane on one engine or flying the DA-42 certainly on one engine is not a big deal because, because it's quite a light, low-drag airplane. Um, you have enough power in the one remaining engine to, to still maintain reasonable amounts of performance. So you can, you can fly it about... 110, 115 knots in the cruise, and you can still uh, climb at about sort of five, six hundred feet per minute, um, which is pretty, pretty good actually. It's it's about the sort of performance you might expect from most uh, single-engine, um, simple light aircraft, something like a PA28. Uh, so essentially, you you go from quite a high-performance airplane to uh, a PA28, and um, it handles. Uh, handles reasonably well, to be fair. Uh, the tricky part is coming into land when you start to bring the power back on your one remaining engine, because then obviously um, your aeroplane starts yawing 
to the side, so there might be some quite a bit of rudder input involved or a bit of rudder trim input to try and make your life easier on that. Um, <coughs> examiners, <coughs> the good ones anyway, will give you uh, both throttles back just as you're about to touch down. So as you come into the flare, um, he will give you the uh, other engine, um, which means you can then sort of center the engines up and make sure the touchdown is a little bit a little bit easier for yourself. Obviously, for us here, uh, we are going to have to fail an engine for real because um, uh, I'm not one of these people who has a fancy multi throttle thing which I can do um, both sides with. Um, I've only got one old Cytec X52 throttle. So what we're going to have to do is um, pull the engine master on the on the climb out to simulate an engine or to to do an, a real life uh, engine failure after takeoff. And uh, I will make life harder for ourselves because we'll pull what's called the critical engine. So the critical engine is the side uh, with the thrust line closest to the fuselage. So th this this engine here, the left engine, is the critical engine on the DA62. Both props turn to the right side. And in a climb, the down glowing blade is your your more powerful blade, basically. So the thrust line, the the um, the the thrust of the propeller is kind of offset to the side a little bit. Now on this engine thrust is close to the fuselage which means if you lose this um, if you lose this engine this engine doesn't have as much of an effect in terms of yaw this engine the thrust line is on the other side so this engine has more of a turning effect if you think of the um, oh, what's it called the lever arm the lever arm effect from the um, from the other side of the engine is much greater than if uh, you look at this side of the engine so uh, you lose this engine, you've got much more of a yaw effect to deal with. And most examiners will, will pull this engine on you just to make uh, make life harder for you. So we're going to have a real engine failure, basically. So I'm going to whack the critical engine master off. We're going to um, deal with that yaw. We're going to identify the dead engine. We're going to gear up, uh, power up, gear up, flap up, go up. Then we're going to secure, uh, or we're going to hit the engine master switch, or we're going to simulate hitting the master switch to feather the prop and climb away, secure our engine, and then fly um, a couple more circuits. So the next circuit we're going to do after that, we're going to come down and do a low approach go round, and then after that we'll fly around and uh, land the airplane, and that's going to be the end of our test profile. So that's enough for me uh, gabbing on for three years about random airplane rubbish. Uh, let's get the airplane fired up and uh, get underway. So, uh, we'll start off by, we'll have a quick look around. Uh, yeah, M Mr. Hive is there, probably needs to get out of the way. Uh, otherwise he's going to become uh, mincemeat, but never mind, he ain't real. Um, so, <laughs> put the master switch on. Screens initialize, we'll put the position lights on to indicate that we are under battery power. Now, um, I've also got a mod for the, um, for the G1000, which comes with the um, that comes with this DA, uh, DA62 mod, so you may notice some of the colours are a little bit different, uh, which is interesting. Now, straight away I can see we've got a lot more functionality, so this is nice. We've actually got a system page and a fuel page, so that's cool. So we can see um, our fuel remaining up here, which is great. Uh, we've got our uh, we've got a time in service. Uh, I wonder if this is accurate. That's pretty cool. Uh, so that's basically your, your um, hobs meter for the aeroplane. Uh, system page is going to give you volts and amps, that's your electrical stuff. Gearbox temperature, uh, de-icing fluid level, fantastic, cool. That's, that's very much um, better than the default. Um, and then this is your, your gauges that you'd get on the, the default DA62 here. So I wonder if this now works then. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, so normally you, you hit the display back up and you put that on both sides and then it, it, it means you can put one of these tapes on both sides, so you can have engines on this side and systems on this side, uh, which helps when you start the engine. Uh, but we'll, we can just flick between the two, it's fine. Okay, so left and right alternators to fail, piezo heat fail, that's fi fine, we'll cancel those alerts. Uh, alternators are both on, ECUs are... Did, did these now work? Oh wow, okay. Fair enough. Now, technically you should be able to leave it in the, the middle position. Um, in the auto, but I, I guess we'll leave it on A. <laughs> um, <coughs> as uh, I, I guess you would in the in the in the real aircraft. Fair enough. That's pretty cool. And the ECU test buttons should work as well. Sweet. So we should be able to do the actual engine test on on this flight. Okay. Cool. So let's put the um, fuel controls on. 
Now, <clears throat> if we look in our uh, fuel page here, we've, we can actually see we've got um, some fuel in our auxiliary tanks. Now, Flight Simulator automatically loads um, this up. Uh, in real life, you you would never really be in this situation. In fact, let, let's let's make it a bit more realistic. So, if you've got fuel in your auxiliary tanks, as soon as you have enough. Um, empty space in your main tanks, you're supposed to pump these auxiliary tanks dry into the mains. Um, so we can... Uh, I can show you how we do that, actually. So we'll do that as soon as we uh, got the engine running and the aircraft airborne. We'll, we'll pump the auxiliary tanks dry. Okay, so... <coughs> Maneuvering area is clear. Let's uh, get some uh, some weather. I wonder if they actually... Uh, I'll see you next. Oh, look at... Th oh, okay, I love it already. The mod adds the uh, ability to put uh, the altimeter setting into hectopascals, which is awesome. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick look at the East Midlands uh, Q&H. So I've got a Q&H of 1026. So I'm just going to spin our altimeter setting around. Okay, 1016 is set, and ah, of course, it doesn't work for this one, uh, so I'll just set it to the same altitude. Okay, we'll call that uh, set times two. Um, okay, quick look around. And we're going to turn the left engine master on. We've got oil pressure, left glow on, and the annoying bonging noise, which will cancel. And our glow is out, which means we can start. So, clear prop. Left engine's running. Engine oil pressure is in the green. Volts and amps are green. No fire. Successful engine starts. Turn the right engine master on. Right glow is on. And the glow's out. Go back to the engine page. Crank it until we hit 500 RPM. Oil pressure comes straight into the green. Volts and amps are green. No fire. Another successful engine starts. There we go. Okay, cool. Let's get our avionics on now. So that's our radio, autopilot, all that kind of stuff comes on with that. Uh, now, I'm not going to be using the uh, text-to-speech ATC because it's just annoying, but uh, for the sake of realism, we'll, um, I guess we'll put the uh, the frequencies in. Uh, so, it's from memory. I believe that's Nottingham Radio and East Midlands, which is the local Lars provider is that. So we'll have that set up on COM1. Uh, COM2 I'm going to set to Nottingham um, just in case we have a COM failure. It's always good to have your uh, COM2 set up so you can just switch straight to it. Uh, right, okay. So with that, I think we are uh, pretty much ready to taxi. Our trim is set neutral times two. Uh, cabin defrost. I don't know. I can't remember if up is on or down is on, but these two should not be different. These two should be to be the same. You move them the same way to turn them on or off. Um, so stick them both down like that. Uh, in fact, they're probably the same way as the parking brake. So the parking brake is on at the moment, which means that up there should be off. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Right. Put our taxi lights on and parking brake off, and away we go. So the wind is 230 at six knots, which means uh, runway 21 is probably our best bet here at Nottingham. Slightly shorter runway. 
but uh, we should have enough performance in this aeroplane to uh, to handle that runway quite easily. In fact, I know we have enough uh, performance in this aeroplane to handle that runway because that's the runway we took off on uh, the previous video that I uh, filmed here. So we've got some suicidal airport vehicles, as usual. Wouldn't be Microsoft Flight Simulator unless we had somebody try to have a face-off with us in a van. But, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, mate. See ya. Now we're going to pull onto the inactive runway, which is 2709, to do our power check regime. Uh, now in a traditional piston engine aircraft, your power checks usually involve checking the props, uh, checking the carb heat if it's a carburetted engine, uh, checking the magnetos individually. You don't have to do any of that stuff, uh, the DA62, it's all automated. In fact, if I, if, uh, if I was being really lazy, I'd just hit these buttons as we were rolling down the taxiway to um, complete the engine ECU tests. Now in real life you can press both of these at the same time, doing both at the same time. Uh, unfortunately you can't do that in a flight sim where you have to press the buttons individually. Um, so we're going to have to do them one at a time. Uh, now normally again uh, in real life uh, with a traditional aeroplane you'd probably turn the aircraft into wind for this. Um, not as important with the DA62 because it's a um, water-cooled aeroplane, so it doesn't actually rely on air cooling to cool the engines. It is better for the props if you turn it into wind, I guess, um, but, I mean, it's a, it's a sim, so we're not going to go too crazy. Okay, so, I'm going to press and hold our left engine test and see what happens. So we got an A and B fail on the left ECU. You can hear the RPM coming up. That's checking the prop. See the RPM going up and down on the gauge on the right-hand side. And that's our ECU test complete. Wow, that is really good. Fair play to whoever made this mod. Right, do the same with the right engine. A and B fail on the ECUs. RPM is coming up. And it's coming down as it's checking the prop operation. Props, by the way, on the DA62 are electric. Uh, not hydraulic, so there's no uh, gearbox oil to move around the, uh, the prop governors. They are all electrical. Uh, okay, so that's our uh, engine test complete. We will... We do a quick switch from A to B, ECU. Normally there's a little kick um, of RPM, you kind of feel it as, the, as it switches over between the two, but um, seeing as the engine is still running as you switch from A to B, uh, we'll assume that they are working properly. We'll set up bugs. Uh, so we'll set um, runway heading on the heading indicator, and we'll go for an altitude. Uh, let's go for 2,000 feet. I'm not sure what the cloud base is actually, let me just double check. Um, East Midlands are saying cab okay. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, let's go up to 3,000 feet then. Uh, give ourselves a little bit of a, uh, an easier time spotting what we're looking for. Um, I will turn our course deviation indicator uh, to runway heading as well. Oh my god. Please no. Now I can have a quick look at our plug, so I can have a look at our first heading. So, our, well, our only heading is uh, going to be 358. So we'll set 358 once we're departing the circuit. We'll uh, depart on the downwind leg straight out to the north. It's a left-hand circuit for runway 21 here at Nottingham. So we'll check approach path. Uh, left and right looks clear. Nothing seen, nothing heard. Transponder can go... Uh, let's put the wind on, actually cheat a little bit more. Uh, transponder can go 7,000 and on alt. Peter heat and the lights are all on. Okay, parking brake released again. Okay, so in real life I'm making a radio call, so Golf Foxtrot Foxtrot Hotel Oscar entering a backtracking runway 2-1 for departures of the north. Got some very helpful pappies right on the uh, the actual runway here. Fantastic. That would be an interesting obstacle if you were landing on the uh, on the long runway. So 
So we'll do one last check of our T's and P's. Everything looks to be in the green, looking good. Now, if any of you guys have flown a DA62 in real life, please tell me what you're supposed to do with the, the auxiliary fuel pumps here. Uh, I'm assuming there's something that you'd, you'd use in an emergency. Um, not kind of as you use the backup fuel pump on a Piper, but l let me know if anyone knows exactly what you're supposed to do with that. Uh, I'll be interested to know. The DA42 does not have those, so uh, a little bit all at sea when it comes to, to those things in the 62. All right. So we'll just hold it on the tow brakes on the runway a little bit here. Make sure our heading is aligned. Runway uh, heading on the HSI agrees with heading the runway pretty much. Uh, bugs are all set. T's and P's are in the green. Uh, let's bring the power up to about 50%. And check our T's and P's are working as they should. No warnings. Okay, brakes off, full power. And away we go. Airspeed's alive. Got a big crosswind from the right, so I'm adding a bit of right co correction on the stick. Coming up to 75 knots, rotates. Positive climb, gear up. And we'll climb at 100 knots. Climb retreat, feet, good look out to the left. In fact, we'll climb through 500 because airfield elevation here at Nottingham is about 130 feet. So we'll go for, yeah, 630. There we go. And we'll start turning around onto our crossman leg. Trying to avoid uh, Tolleton Village, which is ahead of us as much as possible. Passing 1,000 feet now. After checkoff checks, so engine T's and P's are good. Attitude and trim sets for the climb. Turn onto downwinds without uh, buzzing over the top of Cockgrave, if at all possible, which is this uh, town you can see just down there to the uh, left of the nose right now. Don't overbank it. Okay, so Golf Foxtrot Hotel Oscar. Hi, Darwin, runway 21, departing to the north. Well above the ATZ now. Got to be careful not to climb above 2,500 feet, though, because uh, that is our uh, airspace shelf at East Midlands that's just over the top of Nottingham. We're going to wait till we pass the National Water Sports Centre, which is this group of lakes just to the left of the aircraft at the moment before we climb above uh, 2,500. So I'll drop the nose and just let the aircraft accelerate a little bit. Bring the power back to maximum continuous, which is 93%. Okay, so this mod actually enables you to... Um, as we bust airspace... Well, not quite, because we're actually past the airspace now. So we can continue the climb. Uh, yeah, so you can actually set... Um, any sort of power setting you want, instead of just multiples of 10, which is what the default aircraft allows you to do, which is really nice. Really impressed with uh, what this mod adds so far. Definitely recommend getting it. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the in the description. Okay, we'll bring that power back. We'll, we'll go a little bit further back than Max Continuous. We'll go about 88 for the Back to the Future memes. Um, and then we'll level off, trim out. We'll start our timer. we can. There we go. As I completely bust our altitudes. Okay, so 358 is our heading to start our route. So I'll try and get the airplane trimmed out properly. I'll get the heading bug set to that. Coming up 
bit of a mare with the altitude keeping. So we're trying to click things in the cockpit at the same time. Okay, so to the right we can see uh, the River Trent and RAF Syaston just in front of the wing there. So that's a good indication that we are heading in the right direction. In fact, I can see uh, Sherwood Forest already off the nose there. So that's where we're heading. Like I said, um, very simple little navigational leg uh, you'd be expected to do on an MEP test. Uh, landing and taxi lights can go off. Since we're out in the local area now, we're not, not likely to be encountering too much uh, traffic in the close vicinity. We'd probably switch over to East Midlands and uh, grab ourselves a basic road traffic service. Probably basic service, given the visibility is really nice today. Uh, we have got real world weather on, and it's surprisingly quite a nice day here in the UK. So uh, no need to trouble the controller for a traffic service if we don't have to. Now this is a very uh, very short nav leg. It's going to take us. Uh, it's only going to take us a few minutes, certainly at this speed. Uh, the airplane's uh, hammering along nicely, 165 knots, which is pretty much what you'd expect from one of these um, for maximum continuous power setting. Uh, if I was doing this leg in real life, I'd probably slow things down and fly about 120 knots, just because it makes life uh, a lot easier on the on the nav. Um, but uh, we don't want to be navigating uh, around the Midlands all day around Nottinghamshire, should I say. Uh, so I'll uh, do this fairly quickly. So our point that we're aiming for, if you can see this little lake here, uh, is the Sherwood Forest Centre Parks. So that's what we're navigating towards today. And once we uh, get over the top of that, we are going to start our general handling detail. town you can see off to our left is Mansfield. You can see the River Trent winding its way all the way, uh, well that's actually the River Trent winding its way all the way to the, not sure what that is, I don't think that uh, should really be there, or if it is in real life it's much smaller than that. Uh, you've got Clumber Park up ahead, uh, Rufford is, I suspect one of these down here, Rufford Abbey, a bunch of quite nice places. Somewhere over here, this should be the old uh, mine headgear uh, for Mansfield Colliery. Quite a distinctive building. Okay, so we'll call that the end of our uh, navigation leg. Taking us four minutes exactly. Beautiful. Okay, so let's slow things down and start our general handling details. So let's say uh, the examiner's asked us to demonstrate some steep turns first of all. So we're going to do our hasel check, which is anything we do prior to um, more sort of energetic aerobatic type maneuvers. Although it's not really aerobatics that we're doing here, um, but we always do the check nonetheless. So height is sufficient to be recovered. Uh, our company usually says before 3,000 feet. Uh, we're at 3,000 feet at the moment. We don't intend to be stalling the aeroplane, so yeah, okay, height is sufficient to recover. Uh, airframe is in the clean configuration. Um, safety and security, so seatbelts are on, doors are locked, nothing heavy, you know, heavy bags or anything in the back, have we? No, our virtual pilots haven't brought any baggage with them, very sensible. Engine T's and P's are in the green. Um, I guess we can we can put the fuel pumps on maybe. That might uh, might be something you have to do for these sorts of maneuvers. Let's put them on. Uh, location and lookout. So location, we're looking for something that's clear of active airfield, built up areas, controlled airspace, danger zones. Where well, you can see there's a built up area right in front of us, so that's not ideal. So let's do a uh, clearing turn to the left to take us away from the city of Mansfield. Or the town of Mansfield? I don't know if Mansfield is a city or a town, actually. As we're going around, we're having a good lookout. 
very, very important that we look out for any traffic. Now, you don't really have to, strictly speaking, have to do a clearing turn as part of a steep turn manoeuvre because um, the manoeuvre itself is kind of a clearing turn. Uh, we'll go on to... Yeah, this should do about 1.50. And center our heading bug. And we'll go all the way around. Uh, and we'll go... Let's go to the left first. So another good look out to the left. No traffic sighted. Okay, so bank, balance, back pressure. And we'll go to a 45 degree angler bank. We had just enough back pressure to keep the aircraft level. And in a DA-42, you don't really require a huge amount of back pressure. Um, it's one of the features of the airplane, very, very efficient wing. So you try to keep your speed fairly stable. You can add a little bit of power, take a little bit of power away. And in real life, I'd be looking around constantly as I was doing this. It's just a little bit more awkward uh, using a hat switch in flight simulator to do the same sort of thing. And just swiveling your head in real life. I guess you guys with these track IR things have life a little bit easier. So we're going to anticipate by about uh, 20 degrees and then take ourselves out of the turn, relax that back pressure, make sure you don't start climbing and neutralize any power that you have set. So it's expect about 50% power setting. Okay, so there's a steep turn. Now we could do one in the other direction if Mr. Examiner wanted us to do, but let's say Mr. Examiner is uh, sick and tired of doing steep turns. So let's move on to our next maneuver, which is going to be a stall. So we'll do a uh, clean configuration stall, fully developed. Uh, recovery as soon as we detect that the aircraft is fully stalled. Okay, so we're going to do a um, another hazel check. But it seems we've just done one, uh, we can do what's called a hell check, which is an abbreviated version. So height sufficient to be recovered. Engine T's and P's are all good. Pumps are on. Uh, location and lookout. So location again, we're clear A, B, C, D, active airfields, uh, built-up areas, controlled airspace, danger zones. Um, and look out, so we're going to have a good look out, and so we'll do another look out turn to the left, uh, go on to about a north-easterly heading, and then we'll do our manoeuvre as soon as we come out of our look out turn. So again, in real life, I'd be craning my head around, looking for traffic, looking for traffic, looking for traffic, all the way around as we go around there. Um, sure you can forgive me for not doing that in a flight sim given that it's a bit awkward right so level the wings center the heading bug and straight into the maneuver so I'm just gonna idle the power disc the props let the airplane slow down keep the uh, little trapezoid lined up so add as much uh, left rudder input as requires try not to add too much trim because it just makes recovering uh, harder and just pitch to maintain altitude and there's our stall warner just coming in there. So that's the first sign of an incipient stall, which means the aircraft isn't quite stalled, but it's about to. Looking for a light buffet. And yeah, she's pretty much gone. So aircraft's high rate of descent. Can't recover it. I've got full back stick now. So recover. Control con centrally forward to recover the stall warner. Full power set. And then reset the attitude to the climb. Now, in real life, um, I do that as soon as I recognize that the aircraft was stalled. Um, but I just wanted to, to delay it a little bit so I could um, explain the things that you're looking for. So don't use that as an example of how to recover from a stall in real life. Obviously, you'd do it much quicker than that. Okay, so we'll recover back to our altitude. Um, let's say uh, the examiner wants to see another type of stall from us. So let's say he wants to see a base to final turn configuration stall. Now this is one that, that gets, that tricks a lot of people because uh, it's a little bit more um, in depth, the recovery process. Only very slightly, but it's, it's enough to uh, to wrong foot people who are a little bit stressed out because, you know, they're being tested. Uh, so it's a good one to practice. So height still sufficient. Airframe. Okay, so speed, speed check gear down. We need our gear down for this one. And we also need uh, our first stage of flaps as well, so we'll let the aircraft slow down again. And speed check flaps one. OK, 
Okay, so we'll stabilize the speed at about 100 knots, which is probably what we'd be doing uh, for a base to final turn. And we're basically simulating simulating the situation where we're, we're turning from base to final, surprise, surprise, as the name suggests, uh, which is a maneuver that um, catches a lot of people out in real life, so it's a good one to practice. So, heights, airframe, done, safety and security, still secure, engine T's and P's are still good, uh, location lookout, so location is ABCD clear, and lookout where the maneuver itself is a turn, so we don't need to do a clearing turn, but we'll have a good lookout in both directions, and then we will start the maneuver. So I'm going to start a 30 degree angle bank left hand turn, I'm just going to pull the power back, it's a power on stall, so I'm not going to idle the power completely, but I'm going to, I'm going to bring the power down to the point where, uh, okay, the stall one has gone off, so recover, so control column centrally forward, full power, then level the wings, then bring the aircraft back into a climb, looking for the best rate of climb, positive rate, gear up, gears up, positive rate, flaps up, and there's 3,000 feet again, so we'll level off here. And allow the aircraft to accelerate again. Okay, so... Uh, they're the sort of most basic uh, general handling maneuvers. Uh, the examiner could ask you to do a bunch of different types of uh, stalls. Well, one more stall, really. I mean, you could ask you to do the approach configuration stall, which is basically uh, get the aircraft full flat gear down and uh, stall in a straight line again, power on. Uh, that's a little bit more simple, so we'll, we'll not go over that. Uh, I could ask you to do a bunch more steep turns. You could even ask you to do a PFL, so we could idle the throttle and uh, get you to... Um, demonstrate putting the airplane down if you were to have a double engine failure that's a bit of an unkind one because it's really quite unlikely that you're going to have a double engine failure uh, in real life I'm not sure what the odds on that are but they are pretty long uh, but once you've done all your general handling features or general handling exercises uh, you're going to get given the nav back more than likely and get told fly me home and uh, let's do some circuits so I'm going to turn uh, roughly in the direction of Nottingham. Now, I could probably do this dead reckoning. I can see the, the lakes over at Syreston, um, over there. So I know that Nottingham is pretty much where I've pointed the nose here. But uh, it's good to demonstrate to the examiner that um, you can operate all the features of your aeroplane. And if you're lucky to be lucky enough to be flying a uh, J42 or a DA62 on your MEP uh, test, then uh, you've got a G1000 at your disposal, so why not use it? So let's uh, DTO, uh, let's, let's do it on this side. Um, echo. Golf. Bravo. November, enter, enter, put the CDR on to do GPS, wind the heading bug up, and we'll go heading and out to start, and we'll spoil it on, and nav mode. Okay, so the FD bars have come up, flight director bars. And uh, it's following that track nicely for us. And we've got all our route data at the top there. 13 miles to go. Ground speed is 140 knots. Estimated time on route, five minutes. Well, let's, uh, let's bring that down a little bit, shall we? Let's go back to max continuous. Or somewhere close to max continuous. Let's go for about 88 again. And while the aeroplane is flying us home, we can enjoy the view. So we've got the uh, the town of uh, Southall on the left here, and the horse racing track just over there. Uh, I think this building here, in real life, it's a big church, uh, but the genius AI of Microsoft Flight Simulator has rendered it as a big uh, office building. So rip that church. Two lakes here are really useful because um, as long as you make sure you don't fly inside of these two lakes, you can stay outside of uh, RAF Syreston's ATZ. RAF Syreston, it's, um, it's a military-owned airfield. They don't fly fighter jets or anything out of it. 
but they do um, a lot of gliding. So air cadets and uh, RAF personnel can go uh, and glide there in motor gliders and unpowered gliders and stuff like that. So you don't really want to be flying too close to that, otherwise you're going to get a uh, potentially a glider in the face. Right, okay, so we've got three minutes to run. Let's do a pre-join check. So let's turn these extra fuel pumps off now. Let's try and drain our auxiliary tanks. So as I was saying, normally if you've got fuel in the aux tanks, you as soon as you've got enough space in the mains, you drain your auxiliaries into your mains. So we do that by just sticking on the auxiliary fuel pumps. Get an enunciation on here uh, and an advisory. That's absolutely fine. That's what we expect to see. And we should see the quantity going up in our main tanks as the auxiliaries drain into them. Okay, so fuel is on and sufficient uh, radio, so we've got uh, Nottingham Radio on the standby. We'll probably be signing off East Midlands and saying, yeah, thanks for the service, and going back over to Nottingham Radio, making a radio call and announcing that we're coming back in for circuits. Uh, mixture we don't have in this aeroplane. Altimeter, uh, set airfield Q&H. So let's just double check that the Q&H hasn't changed at East Midlands. Dun, 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 dun. 1026 it is, and 1026 we've got set. Okay, happy with that. And DI is all automatically aligned up for us. Happy days. Okay, so remember we've got that bit of airspace to worry about once we pass the water sports center. So I'm going to decrease our altitude to uh, about 2,100 feet. I'm going to do a standard overhead join for runway uh, 21 at Nottingham. So, um, Let's put it into VS mode and go nose down and bring the power back a touch. Now the autopilot is uh, pointing us directly at the airfield. Ideally, we want to be off to the to the right slightly, so I'll, uh, I'll center up our heading bug. Put the aircraft back into uh, heading mode and pull the nose to the right slightly. Now, depending on how busy the airfield was, we could choose to uh, try and descend on the dead side. Um, so just come straight in, descend dead side, and come across onto crosswind. Um, or we could indeed uh, line her up on long final, come straight down long final. Um, but let's do a, a standard overhead join for the sake of um, keeping things uh, nice and nice and proper. It's the, it's the safest option available to us. So if there is traffic in the circuit, which there usually is at Nottingham, I mean, not at the moment because there's no traffic because of her lockdown, but uh, usually Nottingham is a pretty busy little place. It's full of uh, lots of GA pilots doing whatever GA pilots do. So we like to make sure that we announce uh, our presence to everybody as we're coming in. One thing we can do to make ourselves um, to announce our presence to them a little bit more as well is uh, stick on our big lights. So I've got our forward-facing lights on. Alt uh, is capturing at 2,100, and uh, we'll set the power about yeah about 35 percent, 35 40 percent should give us uh, about 120 knots or so, which is okay for this part of the process. We usually try to slow down to about 110 or so for the circuit. Uh, just because we don't want to be going too fast, given that we might be sharing the circuit with airplanes that only do 80, 90 knots or so um, flat out. And we don't want to be um, flying up their butts, for want of a better word. So we're crossing over the field now. We're going to start to make our turn to the left. I mean, this is peak laziness doing all this on the autopilot, by the way. But it is, believe it or not, part of the test to demonstrate that you know how to use the autopilot properly. So, you know, let's just say our examiner wants to uh, wants to see us use that autopilot. I'm going to put the uh, CDI back onto VOR mode now, uh, just so we've got an indication of our runway heading. There's Nottingham down there below us. A bunch of aeroplanes parked on the uh, disused uh, bit of runway there. Now we're over on the live side, so we need to make sure that we maintain at least a thousand foot clear of circuit height, because potentially there's guys below us. And we're going to start swinging around now to the left uh, to start our pass 
through the overhead again, onto the dead size, and then uh, our descents. I'm going to knock her out of autopilot in a second because it's, it's doing these turns quite slowly. In fact, let's do that now. So autopilot off. Let's pick the bank angle up a little bit. Okay, and we're aiming to put it across the uh, runway 21 numbers, a thousand feet above circuit height, and then we'll start our descent. On our heading bug up again. Got the lights on on runway. Uh, 0927, which is very unrealistic because the guy who owns Nottingham Airport um, <laughs> doesn't like turning those on, shall we say. Okay, so we're passing through the centre line now. Let's start our descent. So we bring the power back and reset our altitude. 1100 feet should... Uh, in fact, circuit height at Nottingham is 950, isn't it? So... Probably aim for about uh, a thousand feet. While oh, the circuit height at Nottingham is 950 on the QNH, it's 800 on the QFE. It's at uh, airfield elevation of about 130 feet, so 950 is about uh, where you want to be, I guess. So that's so 900 feet on there. to descend quite steeply when you're doing a uh, an overhead join for runway 21 at Nottingham because the um, the little part of Nottingham that sticks out there into the ATZ it's called Gamston um, you want to try and avoid those really, um, avoid that part of uh, that built area just for noise abatement purposes so you want to be winding people up okay so like I said on the ground uh, we are going to do a standard approach so that's going to be full flap. Uh, we're going to touch and go from that. And then out of that, we're going to um, turn an engine off and see what happens. So let's get the airplane trimmed out properly. About 110 knots, looking good. Play the left. Start our turn. On to downwind. Avoiding built pair of Cockgrave here. Double out brakes, undercarriage, mixture not required, fuel on and sufficient flaps, speed check flaps on. Instruments are all good, car peak don't have, hatches and harness are secure, landing lights are on. Before landing checklist completes. speed at about 100 knots and start to turn base leg now. Power back a little bit. Start the descent. to really drag up once you've got a bit of gear and flap out. Which, uh, yeah, I guess the real aeroplane does that. Maybe not so much with just one stage of flap. Might be a little bit too much. That's a terrible base to final turn from me. Really want to be aiming to, to roll out, bang on the centre line. Yeah, thanks for the altitude warning. Okay, pretty much lined up the centre line. Speed check flaps too. Let's uh, wake our seat up a little bit. We want to be aiming for about sort of 85, 90 knots, uh, 
uh, for our final approach speed in this airplane. It's uh, 84 in the 42, uh, so let's go for 90 in this airplane, given that it's a bit bigger and heavier. And there's a bus crossing the runway. Thanks, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, coming into the friction zone, start to bring power back. Oh, come on, center line, where are you? Oh, horrendous. Okay, there we go. Got there eventually. Definitely not my finest effort. Okay, speed check. Uh, gears coming up. Positive rate. Flaps away. Okay, so aircraft's climbing away, VY flaps up. Okay, well, we've had an engine failure. So straight away, we get that trapezoid in the middle. Okay, identified dead leg, dead engine, left engine's failed. Power up, we're okay, we're at full power. Gear up is up, flap up, flaps up, go up. Okay, let's go for VYSC, let's aim for about 90 knots. Let's see what kind of uh, climb performance we can get out of this thing. 3, 350, yeah, about right. I'm going to extend uh, upwind straight ahead. Um, while we deal with this issue, get the aircraft trimmed and start to pile in some rudder trim to help us balance out the aircraft. Okay, we've got the left alternator fail warning. That's fine. Got no fire. And we'll start our turn now. So we've popped slightly outside of the ATZ, but uh, in a real life situation, that probably wouldn't be such a huge issue given you've just had an engine failure. Now you'd be calling uh, Mayday. And getting the airplane set up to come back in and land. Obviously, we have to pretend that uh, this is just a simulated engine failure, so we're going to carry on with one more manoeuvre before we land. Now, top of climb, we can do our engine secure all checks. That's going to be left alternator off, left fuel. <sighs> God. Left fuel. Off. I don't know why you can't just drag that lever. Come on, Microsoft. Uh, keep it coming around the corner. Now, as you can see, the single engine performance of the airplane, pretty decent. Still make 100 knots. Relax a bit of rudder pressure and add a bit more trim in. I'm going to bring back the power on our one remaining engine to max continuous. There's our plane with its prop still slowly rotating. Now in real life, uh, the prop usually just kind of sits there stationary once it's, uh, once it's feathered, but uh, fair enough. That's close enough. Given that the, uh, the default Microsoft Flight Simulator version just keeps spinning around at full speed, so this actually is a reasonable representation of what a prop does when it's feathered. So we're a little high, uh, but that's fine. I mean, a bit of extra height. Given we've got we've got a failed engine, is not a bad idea. So brakes, undercarriage, uh, so speed check. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to defer gear uh, just because um, we don't want to have that extra drag until the last possible moment. Mixture, full rich, uh, don't have to worry about it. F uh, fuel on sufficient flaps, uh, don't need just yet. Instruments are all good, carpet don't have, hatches and harness are secure, and the lights are on. Okay, let's turn to base leg. Once we're on base leg, we are going to hit, uh, get the gear down. Now in real life, um, we have what's called an asymmetric committal altitude. So an altitude below which uh, we basically have to land, we can't go around. Uh, now for the DA42, uh, at our company, it's, uh, it's about 300 feet. Um, so we'll go around at 300 feet. So speed check gear down. Uh, 
and speed check, not quite. Thought that gear would slow us down a bit more than it has. Through the centre line. So you can see the trapezoid is now uh, trying to fly out the other side of the uh, the instrument there. So a lot of rudder trim alterations as we're messing around with the power settings. It's quite tricky. Speed check flap. One. And we're coming down to 300 feet. And then we're going to do a go around. So I'm messing with the rudder trim constantly. You can't see it because I've got a little switch on my, uh, on my joystick that I'm doing this with. Okay, 300 feet will do. Full power, so power up, gear up, flap up, and go for VYSE again. Normally we wait for positive rate for gear and flap. This is the one occasion where we don't. We just crank it up as quick as we can. Trimmer into the climb with both rudder and elevator trim. Try and maintain the center line. We're not doing a particularly good job of that. My apologies. speed up a little bit. I'm just defaulting to uh, DA42 blue line speed as a setup. I'd imagine the DA62 has a slightly faster blue line speed. Uh, let's turn our aux pumps off actually. Because as you can see we're going to start getting an imbalance between the two tanks because we're burning fuel out of one and not the other. Uh, that's 500 feet. Start our turn. Very very gently. Now in real life, uh, this exercise is really quite tiring. None of the controls on the DA42 or the 62, I'd imagine, are power assisted. Um, so the amount of rudder pressure that you have to put in to, um, to do this exercise properly is, is quite a lot. You have to put a lot of force into the rudder. Um, so if you've skipped leg day, as I have for the last uh, every year of my life, um, it is uh, it's pretty hard work. All right, plane, shut up. Nowhere near the stall. Now this one's going to be to land. So we'll see just how that works, because I'm going to have to make an actual proper single engine landing. Like I said, normally the examiner gives you back uh, your dead, quote unquote, throttle um, for the touchdown to make life a little bit easier for you, so you can uh, balance things up before you touch down. Uh, but we can't do that because we've got an engine fail for real. As you can see, climb performance with uh, one engine, not stellar. It's probably about what you get out of a Tomahawk on a hot day. That says level. Okay, brakes, undercarriage defer, mix you don't have, mags don't have, fuel on a sufficient, flaps uh, defer, instruments are all good, carpet you don't have, hatches and harnesses secure, lights are on. Bring it back to max continuous. Every time we make a power change, we have to make a rudder. Uh, position change to compensate for the increased or decreased your okay start our turn on to base leg Pretty much a wind corrected base leg there. It's okay, let's have speed check gear down and speed check flaps one. Let's try and get this base to final turn right this time. Of course, I haven't. A little bit closer than last time, though. 
Okay, final approach. Reds, blues, greens. Got three green lights. No reds or blues to worry about. And we're going down. And once we hit asymmetric committal altitude, we're going to crank full flap in as well. So I'm having to be very active again on the rudder and the rudder trim as I'm messing around with the power settings. A little bit fast. Okay, there's 300 full flap. Okay, close enough, still in one piece. I'm swerving off the runway. Okay, still alive. Like I said, touching down with only one engine. Really, really tricky to maintain uh, directional control. See if we can taxi on one engine, that'll be interesting. That seems to be doing all right. Okay, so landing lights, strobes, flaps. And transponder to standby. Peter heat off. And uh, we'll avoid this uh, TBM or whatever it is here. Park on the other side of it. Another, another van just, you know, casually hanging out on the taxiway. Don't mind me, brother. And uh, we'll park it up on the fuel bay, I guess. Although this is the Avgas Bay, that's the Jet A Bay, and uh, DA62s run on Jet A, not Avgas. Oh well, immersion busted. Okay, so parking brake sets. Uh, normally you'd uh, run your engines for a couple of minutes after touchdown to uh, to cool them properly. Um, but it's a flight sim, so I'm not going to bother. So that's uh, avionics can come off and master off. Taxi lights off. And electric master switch off. Okay, and you'd usually leave the alternators in the on position there. Okay. So hopefully that was um, a, a bit interesting for you. It was certainly a bit interesting for me. Uh, like I said, it was a, it was a new experience um, with uh, this modded version of the DA62. It seems to be pretty, pretty damn accurate, actually. I really recommend it. Um, as I said, I'll put the link in the description so you can go download it and uh, try it out for yourself. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit of a, a demonstration of what you'd have to do on a multi-engine piston um, skills test to get your MEP rating. Uh, if you've got any questions, any queries, if you want to slag me off, um, be sure to leave a comment. Uh, it's more than appreciated. We just passed 200 subs, so massive, massive thanks uh, to everybody who subbed to the channel. Uh, big, uh, big thanks to the ATPL Hub Facebook page for giving us a shout out. Uh, really, uh, really appreciate that one, guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.